Hello everyone, the topic for discussion now is Removable Orthodontic Appliances. As the name only says, Removable Orthodontic Appliances are the appliances which can be inserted and removed by the patient itself. These appliances depend to a major extent upon the patient's cooperation. If the patient is not wearing the appliance properly, the appliance cannot work and desired results cannot be achieved in specific amount of time. What are the action of removable appliances? Removable appliances actually act by application of a single force, that is the tipping force. Bodily movement is not possible by removable appliances. The, the tipping force is nothing but it tries to pull, pull, push the crown in one direction, the root will come in opposite direction. Proper position of the root is very much important prior to using these removable appliances. Because if the root apex is present at its proper level, then only the movement can be achieved. Otherwise, it will further deteriorate the tooth movement. What are the various components of these removable appliances? It consists of active components, iterative components and base plate. Let us know in detail about these components. First coming to retentive components. Retentive components are those components of the removable appliance which helps to retain the appliance inside the oral cavity. Most commonly used are clasps. Clasps helps to retain the appliance properly into the oral cavity. What is the mode of action of these clasps? These clasps either engage buccal cervical intercut or lingual cervical intercut or the proximal intercuts, mesial or distal and will help to retain the uh, removal appliance in the oral cavity. What are the requirements of these clasps? The clasp requirements are first it should be very easy or simple to fabricate. Second, it should properly engage the intercut for whatever, whichever intercut it, it is designed to, uh, it, it is des for which it is designed, either buccal intercuts, lingual intercut, or proximal intercut. It should by itself does not create any active force. It should be passive and should simply retain the appliance. It should, be, uh, it should uh, occupy as less space as possible. There are a number of class which are used. Let us know in detail about each and every class. First is circumferential class. It is also called a C class or three quarter class. This clasp actually engages the buccal cervical intercut. It begins from one proximal intercut, either mesial or distal, continues along the buccal cervical intercut, then passes along distal proximal intercut or mesial proximal intercut, passes through the occlusal embrasure and ultimately ends in the form of retentive arm either on the buccal and parietal or the lingual aspect. We can see here in this diagram it is starting from mesial, mesial proximal intercut, running across the cervical margin and then turning upwards, crossing the distal proximal intercut and then passes through the occlusal embrasure and ultimately ends the lingual or the parietal as well in the form of retentive arm. It is very simple to fabricate but the only disadvantage is does not provide very good retention and cannot be used in partially erupted teeth. And in added requirements of clasp, it is also there that uh, the clasp must be such that it can be used in partially erupted teeth also. But this circumferential clasp, it cannot be used in partially erupted teeth. The teeth must be fully erupted. Next is Jackson's clasp. Jackson's class is also called as full class or U class. Almost similar to C class, but the difference is here it engages both the undercuts. Here we can see uh, it is in the form of a U engaging cervical, buccal cervical undercut and both the proximal undercuts, both the arms pass through the crucial embrasure and ends in the form of retentive arm on the lingual or the parietal aspect. It also pro it provides a better, a bit better reten retention when compared to uh, circumferential class, but the problem is it also cannot be used in case of partially erected teeth. To overcome all these problems, next Adams class came. Adams class was introduced by Adams. It is also called as Liverpool class because it was the first introduced there. It is also called as Universal class or Modified Arrowhead class. This class consists of two arrowheads. You can see both the arrowheads are connected to each other by means of a bridge. This bridge is at 45 degrees into long axis of the tooth. Adams class, if fabricated properly, it gives excellent retention. It is fabricated by using 0.7 mm stainless steel. Wire. It is good, rigid, stronger, provides adequate strength, properly helps to retain the appliance also inside the oral cavity. A number of modifications also can be done in case of Adams class. And the very good advantages of the Adams class is that it can be used in many situations. It can be used in partially erected tooth also. It can be used in permanent dentition. It can be used in primary dentition. Uh, it provides excellent retention. Usually it occupies less space also. But, uh, there are a number of modifications which can be done in Adams class. Like Adams class with um, additional arrowhead can be fabricated. This additional arrow will rest on the adjacent teeth. So two arrowheads on one teeth, additional arrowhead on the adjacent teeth. It will further increase the retention. Sometimes in case of partially erupted tooth, Adams class with a single arrowhead can also be fabricated. Adams class with a soldered buccal tube can be fabricated. Adams class with a soldered J-hook for attachment of elastics can be fabricated. 
So a number of attach, uh, modifications in the Adams class name is the most commonly used type of class. South end class. South end class is the class which is mostly used in case of anteriors, incisors. The wire is engaged um, across the cervical margin of both the incisors and it will help in providing retention. Triangular class. Triangular class is mostly used in the posteriors. It has a, uh, it is fabricated to have a small triangular shape which engages engages the proximal undercut and then it passes through the occlusal embrasure and ends in the form of retentive arm. Ball end class. Ball end class is actually present in the form of a small knob like uh, knob like projection. This knob what which is uh, nothing but called as ball end. It engages the proximal undercut. Nowadays preformed ball end clasps are also available. So this was all about clasps main work of the clasp is, clasps are to retain the appliance inside the oral cavity. They shouldn't be active, they should be only passive. Next coming to active component of removable appliances. It can be bows, springs, screws and elastics. Let us see each and every uh, uh, of this in detail. First coming to bows. Bows are one of the most commonly used active appliances. Mainly they are used for the purpose of retraction of the teeth. These bows are can be fabricated in a number of ways. First, let us see about short labial bow. The short labial bow, it is fabricated by using mostly 0.7 mm stainless steel wire. It consists of a bow, we can see in the diagram, which runs uh, through the anteriors and consists of two loops. Loops are usually in the short labial bow present on the surface of canine, 2 to 3 mm above the gingival margin so that it shouldn't cause any irritation to the gingiva. And then the loops ends in the form of retentive arms on the palatal or the lingual aspect. Activation is usually done by simply compression of the loops. One of the most commonly uh, removable appliances is used. Another is long label bow. It is similar to short label bow, but the only difference is here the loops are present on the premolar, but not on the canines. Mostly uh, in case of orthodontically treated cases, there are the risk of opening up of the space. After extraction of first premolars and closure of the space, in case of relapse, space again opens up between canine and second premolar. If the, if you use short label bow, the retentive arm when it passes distant to the canine, it opens up the space. So here in these situations, we use long label bow, which prevents the opening up of the space. Next coming to split label bow. Similar to uh, the long label bow and short label bow only, but split label bow is that it is split in the middle, it is cut it. It is usually used in case of midline diastema cases. Now, uh, now it is divided into two parts. The one end of, uh, one end of the label bow, uh, is modified in the form of both the ends of the bows is modified in the form of hook. Now to close the space, uh, the hook of one side bow is inserted into the opposite tooth and of the and one side is inserted into the opposite tooth. When the loops are compressed and these hooks are engaged, they try to bring the both the teeth close towards each other. And with this, the midline spacing can be closed. Here we can see in this diagram, uh, this end will be modified in the form of hook. This end also will be modified in the form of hook. This will be engaged on this tooth, this will be engaged on opposite tooth. When the loops will be compressed, the spacing will get closed. Next is liver, reverse labial bow. In case of reverse, la reverse labial bow, also called as reverse loop labial bow, the loop is present distant to the canine. One arm of it will end in the form of retentive arm uh, and will be embedded in the acrylic plate. The other arm will continue anteriorly across the anterior teeth in the form of a bow. Now since the component or the wire is increased, there will be more flexibility in this wire. Activation of this bow is done in two steps. First, the loop is opened up. Once the loop is opened up, the position of the bow will be changed. It will come more incisory. To maintain its proper level, again a compensatory bend is given. With this, uh, like this, the activation of this reverse label bow is done. Next is Roberts Retractor. It is mostly used in the cases wherein there is excess overjet present. This is also constructed by same 0.6 or 0.7 mm stainless steel wire. Uh, the difference is it consists of two helices of nearly 3 mm internal diameter. Now these uh, helices, uh, helices are usually 2 to 3 mm above the gingival margin to avoid irritation. Uh, in, since it is more flexible, it needs to be supported. This uh, Roberts retractor is supported by giving a metal coping on the distal arm of this. This metal coping is given on the distal arm of the retractor uh, uh, um, so that it is more stabilized. Activation is usually done by Closing up of these helices, when the helices are closed, it will create force in this, it, it will create a pushing or the retraction type of force in the anterior segment. Mills retractor. Mills retractor is also fabricated by using the 0.6 or 0.7 mm stainless steel wire, but it requires actually fabrication of complex loops. A number of loops are constructed, we can see in the diagram. Uh, all, this is also used in cases wherein there is um, large overjet is present. 
but most not most commonly used because of complex fabrication procedure. Next coming to high ABL bow with apron spring. This consists of two components. The base wire which we can see is made up of 0.9 mm stainless steel wire and another is the apron spring which is made up of 0.4 mm stainless steel wire. Now this spring exerts lighter forces for long duration of time. We can use in case of elderly patients also wherein we, will, we want usually light force to be applied but for prolonged duration of time we can use. Next is fitted labial bow. Fitted labial bow is actually constructed by using thicker gauge arch bar, mostly 0.9 mm stainless steel arch bar. And it is fabricated in such a way that it is closely adapted to all the labial surface of all the teeth. Mostly used for the retention purpose, not for active, act, um, not, not for the purpose of uh, achieving any tooth movement. So this was all about bows. Next let us see what are various types of springs which are used in removal of plants. Springs are, are used to bring about various types of tooth movements. But before going to that, let us first know what are the ideal requirements of a spring. Ideal requirements like it should be first very simple to fabricate. It should be not very uh, large. Means it should occupy as less space as possible. It should remain active in the oral cavity for prolonged duration of time. It should give the forces uh, or it should produce the forces of required magnitude and should exert forces in the required direction only. It should not get any additional forces. Various types of springs are first let us see about the finger spring. Finger spring is one of the most commonly used type of spring. It is mostly constructed by using 0.5 or 0.6 mm stainless steel wire. It consists of two arms. One is the active arm, one is the retentive arm. Active arm is usually more longer. It is nearly 12 to 14 mm. Retentive arm is more short, usually 3 to 4 mm. It also consists of a helix. The direction or the placement of the helix is opposite to the direction of the tooth movement. Like in this diagram, we want to move this later incisor mesially. Hence, the helix is facing opposite. It is facing distally. How activation is done? Activation is actually done by moving the uh, by, by moving the active arm towards the size, towards the side of uh, movement we want to achieve. Like here we want to move this later mesially. So the spring is first prior to insertion only it is moved mesially and then it is forcefully inserted. So when it is inserted the spring will again continuously put a mesial force and hence the teeth will move in mesial direction. Next coming to cranked single cantilever spring. The cranked single cantilever spring actually consists of a small helix immediately after its emergence from the base plate. It consists of a single helix. It usually helps to move the teeth either in uh, to move the teeth in a labial direction. Mostly used in case of teeth which are most palatally placed, and we have to move it or push it more buccally or labially. It is cramped so as to avoid it uh, from interference from adjacent teeth. Z spring. Z spring is similar to single cantilever spring only, but it consists of two helices here. Used in case of in case of rotations, one helix can be activated and another helix is kept inactive. So it will create a rotation type of force. Also can be used in case of palatally placed it to push them labially. Next is coffin spring. Coffin spring is the spring which is mostly used to achieve dento alveolar expansion. Coffin spring is also made from 0.7 or 0.9 mm stainless steel wire. It is made in the form of an omega shaped loop. Uh, it, it, it consists of an omega shaped loop and consists of two arms. Activation is done by pulling the stone apart from each other and then forcefully uh, inserting uh, it in the mid parietal area. Because of this force is created, here we can see this diagram, it will open up the mid parietal suture. It was introduced by Walter Coffin. Now bows over, springs over. Next coming to retractors. What are the various types of retractors? Retractors are mainly used to bring to, to achieve retraction of the canines. Uh, first is U-loop canine retractor. The, this retractor is constructed by using 0.6 or 0.7 stainless steel wire. It consists of a retentive arm, a U-loop and an active arm. The retentive arm is uh, passes through the occlusal embrasure and ends uh, on the parietal aspect. U-loop is present above premolar, usually 2 to 3 mm above the gingival margin to avoid any irritation. And then another is the active arm which is bent at right angles and is engaged in the uh, uh, engaged uh, through the labial aspect of the canine from below the contact point. Activation can be done either simply by compressing the U-loop. When the U-loop is compressed, canine will get retracted or by cutting or it can be done by cutting the free end of this active arm uh, uh, at least 1 mm like that and again forcefully readapting it onto the canine which will generate a retracting force. Next is helical loop canine retractor. This helical canine retractor consists of a helix. A helix which is present in the vestibule. Uh, next is an active arm and another is a retentive arm. Retentive arm is adapted onto the parietal aspect. The active arm 
uh, is bent at right angles and is adapted onto the canine just below the contact point. By opening up of the helix, we can generate a retraction force and the canine will get retracted. Next is buccal canine retractor and parietal canine retractor. Buccal canine retractor is used in case of buccally placed canine. Parietal canine retractor are used to retract parietally placed canines. Now this uh, uh, buccal canine retractor uh, consists of a small helix. It's usually um, of a 3 mm internal diameter, an active arm and a retentive arm. Retentive arm is adapted on the, passes through the occlusal embrasure and ends on the parietal aspect in the form of retentive arm. The active arm is passed in such a way that it is bent at right angles and adapted from the labial aspect uh, onto the canine just below the contact point. Activation is done by closing up of the helix. When the helix is closed, it will generate a retraction type of force. Another important thing is buccal canine retractor is available in two forms. It can be supported buccal canine retractor or self-supported buccal canine retractor. Supported buccal canine retractor is usually made up of 0.7 mm stainless steel wire. Whereas the self-supported is made up of 0.7 mm stainless steel wire. Whereas supported is made up of only 0.5 mm stainless steel wire. Under such circumstances, supported canine retractor sometimes require metal coping so as to support. So this metal coping of usually 0.5 mm internal diameter is placed on the retentive arm so that it will be more stable. Next is screws. Screws are usually incorporated within the removal appliance base plate. Screws are used to achieve various types of expansions. They are usually activated based upon required time intervals and when the activation is done, it usually brings about dental angular expansion. Next is elastics. Elastics are seldom used with removable appliances. Mostly they are used with fixed appliances only. However, elastics can be used for retraction of the teeth uh, along uh, in case of labial bow. Labial bow can be fabricated with distal extension and to these distal extension, elastics can be stretched to bring about retraction of the teeth. Next is what is base plate. As I've already said, the removal appliance consists of active components, passive components and base plate, retentive component and base plate. Retentive components and active components are over. Now what is base plate? Base plate actually helps to engage all the components into a single unit. So all the active components, retentive components are engaged in the form of one unit with the help of this base plate. It is usually made up of soft cure, uh, uh, hard, uh, heat cure or uh, cold cure acrylic resin. Apart from this, base plate have other functions also. Like base plate can be used either for intrusion of the teeth, extrusion of the teeth, movement of the teeth also. In case of intrusion of the teeth, uh, let us take an example of deep bite. If deep bite is present and we want to correct it, we usually require in case of anterior deep bite, extrusion of the posterior. Under such circumstances, base plate can be modified in the form of an anterior bite plate. So when anterior bite plate is given, it will help in extrusion of the posterior. In case of open bite, wherein posterior open bite, wherein uh, uh, sorry anterior open bite, we have to intrude posterior. Under such circumstances, we usually give posterior bite plate. If posterior bite plate is given, it usually causes intrusion of the posterior, which will ultimately cause extrusion of the anterior, and open bite will get corrected. So with this way, base plate not only acts as an assembly to incorporate all removable, all active and retentive components, but it can itself be modified to have various other functions. Next is clinical management of these removable appliances. What you have precautions we have to take at a time of delivery? While we are giving delivery of this removable appliance, we should check for this base plate whether there is not there should not be any sharp nodules present. Uh, there should not be any irritation to the patient. We should check that clasps are passive. They should not be retentive. We should see that springs or whatever active components we are given they are in the proper place. They are exerting required amount of force. They should not create any excess force because it may result in pain to the patient. Patient must be taught how to use the removal appliances. They must be motivated that they should be used it continuously. Then only the tooth movement will occur. The instructions what are given to the patient usually include how to use the plants, how to remove the plants. The daily night they have to keep the plants in water or shrinkage of the plants will occur. Patient must be motivated to wear it daily and the patient must report to the orthodontist as early as possible if there is any irritation which can occur. What are the problems? Since it is a removable appliance, one of the more biggest problems is nothing but patient's cooperation is required. If the patient is not wearing the appliance, tooth movement at desired amount of time cannot be achieved. The second thing is, since it is a removable appliance, oral hygiene maintenance will be a problem. If the patient is not cleaning the appliance properly, this will result in occurrence of soft tissue irritations, ulcers, etc. There is more chances for the occurrence of caries also. And in case of, uh, in case of faulty fabrication of appliance, uh, because of abnormal or excess action of the force, it will result in more irritation to the patient, more pain can occur. So all these things are considered as problems with using removable appliances.
So this was all about remover orthodontic appliances. Thank you.